G'day YouTube and welcome back to the ASX Portfolio channel. My name's Jonathan. So today we're gonna to be talking about what a quant is and more specifically, what a quant is not. So here I'm gonna give some book recommendations of what I think are the essential skills that quants need and um, the misunderstanding of what people in industry believe a quant is um, compared to really where they need to be. So moving into that, what is a quant and what skills should they have? So specifically here, a quantitative uh, person in the finance industry is someone who's uh, actually studied mathematical finance. Now, what do I mean by mathematical finance? I mean someone who's understanding risk neutral pricing, who's understanding um, portfolio replication from a no arbitrage point of view. So what does this um, skill set represent? Well, it's someone who knows probability and statistics very well. It's someone who has a good base level of understanding in finance. It's someone who um, can actually implement models um, using computer science. And really the core on top of those three skills is the financial mathematics background. Now, financial mathematics is um, pretty tough course so i've studied it in a master's program at the university of queensland but obviously there are very prestigious places to go and study financial mathematics um, around the world and especially in america and england so here i've got um, really what is the base of the curriculum of all these programs now and it's this stephen shree's books <laughs> so volumes one and two and really they're separated into discrete time um, and continuous time. So what do I mean by that? I mean the binomial asset pricing model for series one and discrete time, uh, no arbitrage models are quite easy to understand. And really, if you type anything into YouTube um, to do with option pricing, you're going to get videos to do with this discrete models. The really complex part is being able to understand continuous time series. Why is it difficult? Well, first you need to understand stochastic calculus and there's a whole bunch of probability theory, um, sigma algebra, which I hadn't even heard of before I opened this book. Um, that is really the base of understanding the probability behind continuous time series and stochastic calculus before you even get into the model evaluation. So it, it is a complex part of the degree, but without having this knowledge, really um, you can't describe yourself as a quantitative, a, a quantitative analyst in the financial industry without having this base understanding. And this base understanding is really important as a quantitative researcher. So understanding that the maths is really complicated is really important. Um, so this background is really essential. Now in industry, there are probably three roles that I consider um, as being in a, you know, a quant or a quantitative researcher. So there's, there is the quantitative researcher who does the modeling. And this is, the, this is where you're assigned a task, for example, a bank wants to start um, being involved in, let's say, the second-hand rubber exchange market. So, so you know, someone here in Australia wants to start exporting rubber and um, getting customers on that basis and selling to, you know, different countries around the world. Now, this second-hand rubber market is quite hard to even understand and comprehend. So, how would you go about hedging some of this physical exchange? Well, you'd need to start breaking down. Um, you know, base financial no arbitrage theory. So that kind of modeling will be assigned to a, a researcher. Then they will try and implement and, and start solving um, that equation. And they're either gonna do it through uh, replication and um, having a portfolio replication with no arbitrage pricing, or they're going to do risk neutral um, pricing methodology. Now, whichever route they do, they're just going to create a prototype of how this will work. This is then going to be sent to an implementation team who actually have the knowledge. Um, they, they, they are also kind of like quantitative developers in the fact that they understand some of the maths, but probably not to the same degree as the quantitative researchers, but they can then go ahead and implement these models 
in whatever programming language they're doing. Now, don't get me wrong, the quantitative uh, modeler who was first doing these models is 100% probably capable of um, building the prototype and doing it, but they are generally different skill sets. Now, there's probably one other quantitative research position uh, that sits over the top of this, and this is validation. So validation is where you're overseeing the model development process and the implementation process, and you're in charge of really testing this end product. So again, someone with both skill sets. But um, so in my opinion, a financial quant is someone who has all these skills. They've got the financial math, so those two books there, um, but really more. It's, it's really a life endeavor um, to understand quantitative finance. So they've got the mathematical finance background. Um, they have a really strong background in probability and statistics, and they've got a computer science element to it. So where they can actually go ahead and implement these models. So those are really the core skills um, that are required from a quant in my opinion. Now, so the books that I do recommend um, to anyone interested in the area are 100% uh, Stephen Shree's books here. So volumes one and two. And just remember, we're talking about discrete models here. So really the binomial asset pricing model, tree models here, and then continuous models. So uh, quite involved, but really, really good if you want to get a base understanding of the industry. And really this is what all programs are trying to um, have as the background, backbone of their financial mathematics program. So if you want to skip uh, doing a master's and just head straight to these books, you can get a good, good, pretty good understanding if you read those books about five times over each. So for actually implementation, um, the computational modeling is quite involved. I recommend um, this book here. So implementing derivative models. Um, it's really, really clear um, their implementation strategy, their pseudocodes really easy to understand and it gives you a good understanding um, of how you can actually apply um, all the mathematics in those two books that we've just, we've just heard about um, in the real world. This book is especially good if you're in um, interest rate markets. Uh, it, I think the interest rate models and implementations in this book are extremely good. Um, but yeah, highly recommend this one as well for more the computer science background and implementation. Now, to aid in the probability and statistics, I haven't bought any throughout my program, um, probably because I'm less interested in understanding uh, the base probability and statistical models. I just always, you know, would refer to the base lecture notes. Didn't want to do extra reading in my spare time. What I was interested in is um, time series analysis. And of course, this does have a fair bit of probability and statistics involved in here found a really practical book in statistical analysis of financial data. Now, this is in R, but I, I trust you, if, if you are learning Python, you're going to be able to take up the notation here and be able to implement everything that is explained in Python. So, it would be awesome if this said in Python, but it says in R. So, you trust me, this is one of the best books you're gonna find on time series or an introduction to time series modeling and also um, probability in the financial industry. So highly recommend this book as well. So yeah, hopefully you guys got a little bit of value um, out of this video in understanding what a quant is and what a quant is not. So someone who is not a quant is, um, you know, someone in the financial industry that can, knows a little bit of coding. Well, if they don't know the mathematical background of um, stochastic calculus and being able to do risk neutral pricing, and, and pull apart all these assumptions in derivative modeling um, and pricing, then are they really a quant? Um, yeah, that, 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 is, that really comes down to it. If you have some parts of these things, uh, I, I would debate that you know, you're not truly someone who understands financial mathematics um, and has studied this in great depth. So hopefully this encourages you to go out and um, do some research of your own, maybe enroll in one of a program, but um, really uh, financial mathematics is a lifelong endeavor and you should always be attempting to learn more. So that's what this channel is about. Um, hope you guys are getting a lot of value. If you have any recommendations or you wanna leave your own comments on what you think a quant is, go ahead and put them in the comment section below. 
As always, thank you very much for listening. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and see you next time.